Yo guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. Um, it's been a while since I actually uploaded a, a speed painting video. And so I wanted to share with you this video of a painting that I recently uploaded to Instagram. And it's actually my most liked post um, as of right now. So it has gotten more than 50,000 likes. I believe it's at 55,000 or even more by now. And my the, the most popular post before then was I, I believe at 30,000 likes. So this is insane. I've never gotten this many likes. And so first I want to thank all of you who, who liked the post on Instagram. It, it's really um, crazy and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about that. But um, I just thought it would be a cool idea to actually show you the process of this painting so you get in so you get an behind the scenes look of how I created it. So as you can see I, I started with a really rough scribble so I, I really didn't spend too much time on the sketch up until now so I was very rough and very loose and as you can see I'm now starting to begin with the facial features and to be honest since this is a drawing of a face from the side I had lots of problems I don't know why but I seem to struggle with um, portraits that are drawn from the side I, I like to use uh, I like to draw portraits that are like kind of at a three-quarter angle but if it's like directly from the side or straight on I, I tend to struggle with these types of, of angles so this was definitely a challenge to me and you'll see in a second how I keep manipulating um, shapes and, and repositioning facial features because I'm constantly unhappy with the way and things are laid out in my sketch. So here you'll see me actually moving things around using the transform tool and, and just trying to trying to get the proportions to look correct. But um, nonetheless, it was a really fun piece to work on. I had lots of fun and I believe it's a good idea, idea to challenge yourself every now and then and to step out of your comfort zone because that's the only way you're ever gonna improve and, and you're not going to make any progress if you only stay in your comfort zone and if you only do the things you're good at. So this was a good opportunity for me to actually step out of my comfort zone and to, to try out something or, or, or to work on something that I struggle with. So anyways, um, back to the video. So now you see actually that I'm starting to work on the underpainting. And so what I've done is I turned my sketch to a reddish color by using a color balance adjustment layer and now I'm just laying down flat colors for for the different parts of, of this painting so the uh, her hair is gonna get a separate color and her skin and also her her clothes and I like to start with flat colors just to kind of make it easier for me to to pick colors and and, and to see what works and what doesn't work and once I'm happy with the flat colors, that's when I start um, shading. So here I'm actually still trying to um, refine the, the sketch before I commit to anything. And I'm also picking feather colors for her clothes and stuff. Because it's so early on in, in, in the process, I can experiment and, and try out different things and if something doesn't work out it, it's very easy for me to go back and to fix things and, and to kind of rearrange stuff to the point where I'm satisfied and so here I'm, I'm slowly starting to, to shade um, the portrait and I start with a light color so basically what I do is I select the skin color and I pick a slightly darker color and I also shift the hue to a more reddish tone and then I start to slowly build up um, contrast by introducing darker and darker shadows and also lighter or brighter um, lights so um, here you see that I'm actually experimenting with the lighting and at this point I wasn't too sure with the exact look that I'm going for and this is also a little bit of a different process than what I would usually um, that I would usually pick for for my illustrations. So what I what I typically do is I have a very organized process or workflow 
And with this piece, I wanted to have a more painterly workflow. So what I mean with that is that I wanted a very loose sketch and then just jump right into painting and kind of figure things out while I'm painting instead of figuring everything out in the sketching phase. And as I said, this painting was way out of my comfort zone. So I usually don't work this way. And many things were challenging to me with this particular piece. But I would say I learned a lot from it and it was really rewarding. And I'm also very happy that so many of you have liked it on Instagram. It, it really kind of uh, motivated me to, to keep pushing myself and, and to keep trying out new things and not relying so much on the things that I already know. So I always want to I always want to keep learning and, and studying and, and finding out new things about myself and about art. And illustrations like these are like the perfect opportunity to do that. And so here I'm actually introducing some different colors to, to the painting and I'm also now adding darker shadows. And the reason why you want to add darker shadows is because that's going to build up contrast. And with contrast, you're gonna create sharpness. And, and there are two ways to create sharpness and that is with contrast. And contrast is basically a light color or a light value against a darker value. And the second way to build up sharpness is by having a balance of soft and hard edges. And so I'm going to do a separate video on, on edges and, and, and the softness and hardness of them. But for now, just remember that there are two ways to build up contrast. That is with values and with the softness and hardness of your edges. And, and it's very important to, to kind of know these, these basics about art. And so what I would do is I would just, if, if you're new to painting, no matter if you're new to digital art or traditional painting, then make sure to study a lot from reference and from life. Study your favorite artists, see what they are doing, how they're doing it, and also pick up a few books on anatomy. I know that anatomy can be like super boring and yeah, it, it just sucks having to study anatomy, but it really goes a long way and it, it really pays off. So the more you know about the human body and, and how it works, the easier it will be for you to to create believable paintings and it also becomes easier to to create something out of your imagination so i know that's something that a lot of artists um, strive to do one day to to create amazing pieces out of their imagination without having to use reference and the more you know about anatomy the easier it'll be to do just that so i would say even if it's like super boring to you, like just fight through it and, and really try to understand the, the human anatomy. It, it'll really pay off and yeah, it'll take you very far and you'll have a huge advantage over most, I would say 90% of all other artists because most people tend to give up when it comes to anatomy and, and they just, they always look for a shortcut and there really isn't a shortcut when it comes to anatomy. You, you can fake it up to a point, but once once it gets a little bit more complicated, it'll, it'll be very difficult to fake it and you will really have to know what you're doing. So I would say pick up an anatomy book, spend maybe an hour a day or half an hour just studying anatomy and it'll really pay off in the long run. So anyway, so here you see how I'm still, like basically the most difficult part for me when when I'm starting an illustration is the start. So the sketch and, and the, the, the first hour, I would say, is like the most difficult for me when I start a new illustration. And once I've reached a point um, such as this here in the video where we're at right now, it's, it's super relaxing to me because I know I'm not going to fail anymore. But in the beginning stages, it's all kind of very muddy and I'm not really sure if if the painting is going to work out or not and how I'm like where I'm going to take it. So the beginning stages are really difficult for me and and that's where I'm kind of having the the biggest troubles. But once I'm at this stage where we're at right now, it, it's just a matter of spending time 
working on details and refining the image and that's exactly what I'm doing right here. I'm just adding more effects to it, making it look a little bit more believable and um, adding that 3D effect, like making it look three-dimensional. Um, that's what I'm after at this point because the structure and everything, the, the proportions, the anatomy is all laid out already. So I'm not having, I, I don't have to struggle with that anymore. And it's just a very relaxing process from here on. Basically, I just have to take whatever is on the canvas now and just make it look pretty. And so this is really the, the part where I'm having the most fun. Even though I would say like sketching can be fun as well, but depending on, on the illustration, I sometimes get really stressed out when I'm sketching. And so I, I guess the best you can do is to really just relax and have a good time and not to always expect um, a masterpiece from, from your illustrations. So sometimes when you're starting a new illustration, just accept it for what it is, a sketch. And um, you should treat it as such and not expect it to be something awesome. And I guess if, if that's your mindset, it'll actually be easier to create something awesome in the end. But if you start with the thought of creating a masterpiece, then it's going to be really tough to, to kind of pull that off. That's at least what I've experienced in the past. And so most of, I would say all of my popular pieces are probably ones that I just done for fun. So in my free time, just relaxed, having a nice um, session. That's where I probably created my, my best illustrations. And whenever I'm working for a client or so, I tend to get a little bit like tense and, 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 and stiff and you can kind of see it in my work. I mean, it does get easier the, the longer you've been doing this. So once you're like more experienced and you've done a few commissions and, and client work, it tends to get easier and, and you, tend, you, you tend to loosen up because you kind of know the, the, the general workflow of things. But in the, in the beginning, it can be really tough. So when you start working for clients for the first time, it can be like really nerve wracking. Like it, it really messed with, with my head in the beginning. I was really nervous all the time and I couldn't focus on, on, on the creative things about, about drawing. I was only worried about, oh, is my client going to like this? because I mean, they're paying me for this, so I need to really deliver. And, and by having these thoughts, I was putting pressure onto myself. In the end, it was like really hard for me to deliver anything because I was only thinking about the bad things and, and, and the difficult things instead of focusing on, on the creative side of, of being an artist. So anyway, so this piece is coming close to an end. Yeah, I'm kind of finishing it off with my little logo and just refining the outline a little bit. So the silhouette is like really important. And as I said, I'm going to, I'm going to do separate videos on all of these um, topics, but I just wanted to share with you this workflow and I hope you liked it. So it was a little bit rough. I'm sorry about that. But as I said, I wanted to kind of step out of my comfort zone and try out um, a few, a few new techniques or at least a few techniques that I'm not so used to. And I think it worked out really well and I'm super proud of this illustration. So thanks again guys for liking this piece on Instagram. As I said, it has gotten the most likes um, any of my posts has ever gotten. So I'm really, really um, happy and, and thankful for that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, then smash that subscribe button. And as always guys, I love you with all my fart and soul. Peace out.